age old seeking of theirs. That's all. For such people, it's a pleasure to work. It's a pleasure to me. That's a real joy giving thing for your mother. And that's what they know. That only one thing is going to give joy to our mother is our ascent. Nothing else. And to them they are insignificant. Except that they have to have their realization, otherwise nothing matters. Nobody told me the problems of their family, nothing, nothing, nothing. Such pure-hearted people there are who know what is a Mahamaya. Maha means the great because it has all the powers of all the deities, it controls all the deities. It surmounts over all the deities. And maya also means love and compassion. All this effort for what? People don't understand. In the West people don't understand. Why am I doing it? There must be some reason. It's compassion. In the play of the compassion comes through the Mahamaya power. The play of the compassion. It doesn't come directly, like somebody would say, All right, now come along, I'll give you hundred pounds, have it. That's a crude way of doing things. Mahamaya won't work like that. You are in trouble and you ask for money, what am I to do, mother? <coughs> Suddenly you find on the post, Somebody sends you money saying, Oh, I had borrowed money from you long time back and I felt an urge that I must return. This is your money. And you have forgotten that you had lent that money to that person. Or whether really you have lent it or not. You start wondering and you get the money. That's karma. It's the gracious way. When you are in trouble, accidents, or any physical harm being done to you. Then the Mahamaya acts in such a way that you are stupefied and the whole being is filled with gratitude. I told you the experience of one uh, airlines man who was traveling by a plane which was hijacked and the people who hijacked tried to open the door of the pit where he was sitting as an engineer. But he wouldn't open, so they put a bullet through. And the bullet did not hit him, it went on the sides. So they pushed the door and came in. And they put two bullets at him and both of them went on the side. Just imagine, with this little distance. In the pit there isn't much time, but the, somehow the bullets went on the sides. And he was just saying, Mother, please look after me. That's all. Then they got so angry that they took out their daggers and started hitting him on the head. And the daggers bent. <laughs> and they started looking at the dagger in his face. They said, What are you saying? He said, No, nothing. I'm just asking Mother to look after me. That's all. They looked at him and then they became very friendly, very friendly. <laughs> His wife had gone to America. And just see, I must have given saris to most of you. So many things I must have given, I don't even remember. I had given her one sari. So when she heard about it, 
She said, nothing can happen to me. Mother has given me the sari. She just took the sari to her heart. And she said, I know this sari is the protection for me. And nothing can happen to my husband. She didn't go back to India. She was sure he'll be all right. Because it's quite circuitous to go to Pakistan and all that. And he was all right. That is how the Mahamaya works, in a gracious way, in a way that doesn't make you feel that it's so gross and direct way of doing things. It doesn't talk about it, say about it. I mean, I never want to say how much money I would have to spend or I have spent but the Mahamaya plays on me and somehow or other exposes me too. Even if I try to hide it, it just gets exposed. It's a good play sometimes on me of Mahamaya, how it plays on me because the deities, you see, they also sometimes try to play tricks with me. As I told them that they had bought a shawl for me, for the Guru Puja. I said, now if you have bought the shawl, I am not going to take a sari at any cost, whatever you may do. They said, Mother, but we've bought the sari, we've done the petticoat. I said, whatever it is, I am not going to take it now at any cost, whatever may happen, I will not take it. They are very sorry, you know, because I must have mariyadas. I must teach them mariyadas, I thought. The deities are very cunning. So, before the puja, I went to the bathroom just to wash my feet. You see, that's how an Indian style we wash our feet. So just went there to wash my feet. And the taps in India are at any level. You see, they can be here, they can be there, they can be there. There's no restriction on that, you see. So this tap was quite hard. So I tried to open it, you see. And the whole thing opened out and the whole thing came out. <laughs> and I got completely drenched, completely from top to bottom. <laughs> and I came out. And I said, Now I'll have your sari. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all very mysteriously smiling, you know. <laughs> Such a beautiful feeling of love. See that. I should have thought, after all, what is a sari? If they want to give me, I should have taken it. And their love was so great. What is in a price of a sari? Nothing. They, you see, the love of these people played upon me. And the surprising thing was the sari had the color that a guru should wear. Um, it was so remarkable. All the time, throughout the puja, my eyes were filled with tears. Such tremendous joy. How the deities, how my children are one with each other. How they are enjoying the report of each other. That's the first sign of a surgeon. Is he getting related to the deities? Is he behaving in the way the deities behave? They do not question. They just love me, that's all. Just love. And in that love they play tricks on me, I know. I don't mind. All such little, little tricks played on me are perfect all right. Because they love. There are so many instances I can give you where they have expressed their sweet love for me. In the same way when I find the Sajjogi, Like this time, I'm told that people had grudges that they were asked for money uh, in India. I'm rather surprised at that, very much surprised and shocked. Uh, because in India, every year established Sajogis try to donate money for all the projects they are going to have for you people. They don't need any project. About ten lakhs of rupees, Bombay Sahaja have donated and about six 
or 7 lakhs of rupees Delhi surgery has donated. Even places like Rauri and all that have donated money. For the projects they want to have for you, your children, for your retirement. And the first time, first time in all your life in Sahaja Yoga, the money was asked for. That too not much, 750 rupees is nothing. <coughs> and people felt funny about it. I'm rather surprised that uh, why people felt that way. I mean, the first time, that also for your project, for your children, for your basis. And they collected the money, brought it to me out of which I bought the land for you. And the remaining money I was left with. So I said, you better put it into the Life Eternal Trust, which is now going to be completely exhausted. They said, no, Mother, you have no car. You travel by all these old cars and things, and you don't want to take a new taxi because you don't want us to pay for that. So why don't you buy this car for yourself out of this one? I said, so sweet of them think of my comfort. I mean, I can buy a car of my own, no problem on that. By God's grace, see, if He has that much money to pay for a car for me, He would love to do that. But this gesture, this gesture was so beautiful. And when I refused, the situation developed in such a manner that I could not refuse that money, as there was no… that money was collected out of the surgeries and we have to have certificates that you have sort of gone through the right exchange and this and that. But I could put it as a, my own money. I had to. That's all worked out by deities, I think. Okay. So when there's a complete concord between you and the deities, then you can use the Mahamaya power very well on other people. Before that you cannot, you are using other powers. These are just what we call the siddhis, not the shudra siddhis, not the bad things, but the good siddhis that you get. Like you can cure people, it's nothing great. You collectively you feel another person, nothing great, but you don't feel yourself, you don't see your own chakras, you're not bothered about yourself. You can be saved, you are protected, uh, you are helped, you are getting material help. You also enjoy spiritual life, but still you have to go much further to get to Mahamaya power. You have to go much further to be identified with the deities. They are at the beck and call of your mother, beck and call. Even if I do not call them, they work it out. Like yesterday I did not know there was somebody uh, from the Archbishop of Canterbury, I did not know at all. And somebody had come there as an observer. I had no idea, only coming to me, he saw him getting up, he didn't know that he was in the audience. And I really <laughs> <laughs> lasted him completely and <laughs> That's all the work of the deities. They just turned my mind towards that. They always give me the full idea as to what sort of an audience sitting before. Complete information, a perfect information. Now a person comes and tells me about someone. That's also very common, very common with surgeries, in the best specialty. They'll always tell about someone. I have not seen anyone so far coming and saying, Mother, I have got an ego, please correct it. Mother, I have got a super ego, please correct it. Mother, I have got this problem, please correct it. Always that person has this problem, that person has that problem, they see others, very clear, because we are extroverts. And when they tell me, 
just paying attention to what they are telling me. Not only that I find out about that person, what's wrong with that person, but also I find out what's wrong about the person about whom they are telling. How far to believe these people who are coming to tell me something. Like in India, there's one fellow who is always a murmuring soul, you see, he thinks he does a lot of things to Sahaja Yoga, this and that. And he formed about five, six people, cliques, you see, and they came to see me, very seriously sitting down. We have come for a very serious job. I said, what is that? <laughs> so there's a certain person who is a big politician and he's just trying to mislead you. We have come to warn you about this man. You be very careful. I said, really? So just for a second, split of a second, I went through my computer, you see, <laughs> to find out what this fellow is like. I said, have you told everything about him? They said, yes. Nothing more to be told? Sure. I said, nothing more. All right, I'll tell you. This man has a wife who is not his wife, has an illegitimate child, is like this, his caste is this, his father is like this, mother like this, brother like this and this and this and this with your non-serious jobs of looking after your spirit. <coughs> there is no need to advise me. I give you time, I talk to you because I love you very much. But I love you because you are seekers because you have to ascend, because you are a quality. But you are not aware of your quality, then I have to try some tricks on you. And then you realize that whatever we were thinking was all wrong. Best way is to surrender. Anything comes into your head like that, best way is to surrender, because you must know that the deity of Mahamaya is extremely powerful, very intelligent, very, very absolutely perfect and efficient. But if you play to the right side, that is the compassion side, the love side, the dedication side of this Mahamaya, upon you. But if you try to be too clever, make her unhappy, she plays the other way around. For this understanding you must ascend. There should be spiritual ascent, otherwise you cannot understand. If you are living with your ego and super-egos, you cannot understand. As it is, it is Mahamaya, no one can understand. Even Brahma Vishnu Mahesha could not understand it. It's so tremendous. It has played tricks on them also. But at least you'll enjoy the play. You will be a vehicle. You will be an instrument of that great power. And you yourself will see how you play Mahamaya tricks on them. This is again a promise of Mahamaya, so be careful. It's already been said, you have already noticed, you have already seen it. It will not reveal to you everything because you cannot bear it, the revelation. But slowly you will see it. But you must have power to bear it. If you have that power, then there cannot be anything in between you and me. We all can become one with that. This Mahamaya power is the one which has given you realization, is the one which is guiding you, which is helping you. So many of you are still 
keeping to one deity, like some people who were worshipping Shiva are still with Shiva, some with Vishnu, some with Christ. They are all with Me, all integrated. They still go back to the same, I've seen. That's a dangerous thing because they won't stand with you in that. Still the attachments are there. They are also very subtler attachments. Get out of it. You should have only one attachment and that is to Mahamaya and nothing else. And that's how it is going to work out for you. It's not difficult for you to understand because you have sharp intelligence. But it doesn't go in the heart, more in the brain while those who have lesser intelligence have a larger heart, it goes into their brain very easily. Supposing I go to India, you know all the villagers of India, what will give them the greatest pleasure if I ask for something? Supposing I tell a poor man, can I have half a gram of gold, he will never question. He said, there must be something, she is Mahamaya. If she has said it, there must be something. He will beg, borrow, steal, do something and get it for Me because he sees the complete dimension of that saying that you have to get Me this. He sees it, He knows it and He will work it out in every way possible. Thank you. What is to be done? He will not think, He has to borrow, He has to do this. He is not bothered about this. There is a story of Shivaji which I must have told you before also. That is, Guruji wanted to take his test because Mahamaya is a testing, testing power. And he said to his disciples, he said, I've got a terrible uh, boy on my foot which is about to burst out, a huge thing he had here, tied up. And it's leaking now with the pus is coming out. And I cannot get it cured unless and until one of you can suck it. Imagine. How many of you would agree? Won't even think of it, isn't it? What a test! And especially Indians who are so worried about their personal cleanliness, they wash their hands fifty times. So everybody looked at it quite worried. <laughs> Shivaji had come that time, and Shivaji said, "All right, I will do it." And it was a mango he had put in there. <laughs> and he sucked it and he said, it's very nice and sweet. <laughs> One day again, uh, he asked that, I want the milk of a tigress. Everybody was quite frightened. <laughs> Who is going to milk the tigress? <laughs> Shivaji said, All right, I'll go. He went in the forest and uh, he was looking out for a tigress who has given her cubs. They, they are even worse. And he saw some cubs there. So he went near them and he started saying, See, my guru wants your mother's milk. Can I have it? I want to have your mother's milk. The tigress was looking at him and he bowed to her. He said, You see, my guru wants your milk. What am I to do? And she could see that. She came and stood before him. He had taken a pot with him, which he milked. Him. And he took that for his guru. Because even a tiger. Even a serpent respects the dedication to reality. 
And that's what is lacking. And once that is lacking, you cannot be respected. And you have to respect yourself. Whether others respect you or not makes no difference at all whatsoever. But if you have respect for you, you won't bother about what others have to say. I can make out people who are intensely seeking, who are just seeking, who are just here because of certain relations are here or something like that. Now those who are intensely seeking will get what they have asking for and that has everything in it, everything. And those who are casual will also get casual remarks, that's all. So the intensity will be fulfilled with much greater intensity. No use looking at others, look at yourself. If you are losing your joy, you are no more a surgeon. You have to be in joy, then only you are a surgeon. Mahamaya is a very big subject. I can write a complete book on it. I think in the short time, whatever is possible, I have tried to tell. But I would like you to ask me questions today because Sir Yogi has never asked questions. In a seminar they should. You are not in thoughtless awareness just now. <coughs> Mahamaya can work it out. Please ask me questions. And don't murmur at the back. If you have any questions, please ask me. Another point about Mahamaya is, being a Mahamaya you are not afraid. Supposing Chandi has to stand here with her sword in her hand, nobody would dare go near her. But despite that you people shake sometimes, I don't know why. Ask some questions, important. Well, I have a question. Um, when the energy is coming up like this uh, to the head and uh, it's going to the back and to the front, um, I, I, don't, no, I don't have a clear feeling here if it's coming up and down here or if it's coming here and here and when it goes to here and you told us the four stages above the head to Ardha Bindu and up there, it's going up there. I'm not quite sure how it's going through the head because on your, on your diagram which you do in the Mala Yoga, uh, it was only the beginning part and I'd like you to tell us how it's flowing through the head, if it's coming up and down or going like that. In your case it is going from which side? You feel it's going this way and that way? Yes. You feel that way? Yes. Not from the center? I'm confused. Yeah. It feels sometimes like it comes like a, a chrysanthemum, uh, like that somehow. That means it is going to your ego and super ego both sides. Yes. So that what has to be done is to pray to the deity of Christ so that He sucks in your egos and super egos. When it is sucked, then only you can go in the center. It is trying to cleanse your ego and super ego. You see, wherever you have a problem, the Kundalini goes there. Supposing you have a liver problem, you can see <coughs> on my feet when you come, supposing you have a liver problem, you will see the Kundalini pulsating at the liver. Supposing you have a problem of ego, super ego, then it goes and works there, tries to clarify it and cleanse it. But if you can work out the deity of forgiveness, that's Christ, it can suffer. So we have to use both the things. We have to use the Kundalini as well as the deities. All right? You must pray. You must pray to me. Meditation doesn't mean that you don't pray. Your prayers are like mantras. You must pray. That's a good question. Now better. It's rising in the center. Hmm. 
Costa. One prayer man for the whole tour of England and Cardiff also, of course. Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cardiff. Should work out in Cardiff. How do you find? Uh, many false gurus. They are more active than us, in fact. False gurus are there in yes, Cardiff? Yes. No more in London. They are new problems. <laughs> I was telling David that you must arrange uh, your tours in England. I can't do it now anymore. I shouldn't do it because I've done, I mean, every country says that, that mother, you have gone through England so many times, up and down, you have really done all the crossroads of England. But you couldn't do that to our country a while. Now the you are so many people who have to. That will do, I think. That's quite a lot, thank you. Uh, that uh, you have to do it now, you have to go on touring now. Cardiff is a good invitation. You people should go and work it out. Now there will be holidays. You should go to different places where I'll be and work it out. It can be arranged very easily. You have got your friends there, you've got your uh, centers there, you all should go advertise, work it out, put posters, things like that. You all can work it out. As if I am going there, you can use my tapes. Yesterday's was a tremendous tape, could be used. Whatever tape you want, you can ask and we can do it. We can also show them our videotapes. I think you all should arrange it and organize it. Little money is to be shelled out, doesn't matter. It's like a holiday. I mean, those who want to come to India should come if they have money, otherwise they shouldn't come. For the first four years, I paid for their stay, everything I paid. Kavin will tell you that. But now I can't do it, I'm sorry for so many people. You have to pay for your food and for your traveling. But you must now take it up as a real job for you to go round England, talk to people, take groups there, advertise and work it out. That's what you have to do. It's not such a big country. You are quite a lot of people. Twelve disciples of Christ spread Christianity <coughs> to this extent. And most surprising, all the gurus are well known everywhere. I am not so known. The reason is the Sahaja Yogis enjoy their spirit. Finished. That's one part. You have to do it. This is what you have to give is to spread Sahaja Yoga. Maybe some people may not like you, they may reject you, they may say horrible things to you, you might find certain Sahaja Yogis fighting with you there. Also Sahaja Yogis, when they are going for the work, they do not work as a team, they fight. Indians can't understand. See, they have been listening to you, they can't understand. Why these people have arguments? I said they enjoy arguments for arguments sake. They don't mean anything serious. They don't talk, they don't argue. They're just enjoying. So many of them told me that they argue too much, they talk too much. They argue all the time among themselves. They like to argue. That's what I told them. But this is what it is. You have to go and that will really help you for your ascent. Because why should God give you light if you cannot give it to others? But it should not be a thing that uh, it is a play of your power. It is your dedication, it is your service. And for that you should not expect a reward in any way, nor you should try to dominate others. 
both things are wrong. If we decide that we have to do something, there are holidays now, three months holidays, I'll be going to Europe. You please work it out, it's a very good chance. My absence can provide a very good chance for you. That's what my idea was, that you will take it over. Now you don't wait for my signaling. Please do it. Those who want to do this work, raise your hands. Let's see. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> really? Thank you. I believe you. <laughs>